Well, I have Larry Goldberg here on Friday night uh, before Kathy Wood speaks, uh, but we'll have you on again tomorrow morning. Is that right, Larry? You'll have me on tomorrow morning. Hopefully, Kathy will drop her, you know, magnus opus or minimum, minimal opus <laughs> in the morning, and we'll be able to uh, pass it out. Um, you know, she... Uh, I think she really regards where the Federal Reserve has gone as a huge error. And um, I'm inclined to align. I'm aligned with her yes, actually on yes, that. I mean, we've come, come to that finding kind of from different perspectives. But anyway, we'll see what she thinks tomorrow. Federal Reserve is unrelenting right now. They're, right. Not, yeah. they're not bending a bit. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about the job numbers in a minute, but I would like to start out with Tesla. And I made the statement yesterday and didn't get too much uh, clap back that the all of the bad news is now discounted on Tesla. Now, that doesn't mean there couldn't be an additional future piece of bad news. I'm talking about the bad news as we can probably anticipate in terms of the numbers, in terms of profits, that, that should pretty much be all baked in by now. Yeah, my sense is that the price of the shares is what I think you're talking about. I think the price of the shares have got a way to go down when the quarter end numbers are announced and Wall Street announces a miss. Um, and I think we'll see a little bit of downward pressure. Uh, what's interesting is what the quarterly financials stay because... You know, if my if my assessment is correct, we'll see a significant bump, almost a billion dollar bump, uh, from earnings. Excuse me on um, on energy, right? Which will offset what could be a reduction in earning expectation from vehicles. Uh, uh, but but you know it's really hard to tell. It's it, there's so many factors, and so it's up in the air what will happen. There will be a higher tax rate. Um, so so I I think there still could be downward pressure on the um, on the stock. So I don't think I would accord with you that quote, all the bad news has been out. I, there, I don't think there are big events to occur. Mm -hmm. I think, however, there's going to be constant pressure on earnings this year um, because the impact, you know, it, it's clear now we're not going to make the 2.4 million that I had, you know, wildly dreamt about in terms of deliveries. It's highly unlikely. But on the other hand, um, you know, a lot turns on whether Jeff Lutz is correct about the declining costs and right. that somewhat offsets the reduction in earnings and, as I've said, energy. So who knows? Yes. All right. And then what about in terms of the market? We know that Tesla is obviously going to be affected by the overall market. If the market takes a 10% breather, do you think Tesla <clears throat> takes that same 10 or some multiple of that same 10 with the market? Yeah, typically uh, Tesla's beta is you know pretty high, it's, uh, mm -hmm. and so it will tend to um, extend the market's reach down and up. Right. So I think that will continue. That pattern will continue. I don't see any reason why Tesla would escape this. You know, I I think the uh, economic news is not going to be great going forwards, but that doesn't necessarily the market goes down. The market indicators are not bad at the moment. They're actually quite good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot turns on, you know, what the Federal Reserve does and the expectations of what they're going to do. So they're going to set the expectations as, um, you know, as tight as they can. And, you know, any, any, change in that would be very well received by the market. But the market's very buoyant right now in general terms. In general terms, in general terms. Well, with that in mind, I'd like to just, I, 
I don't commonly talk about politics on this channel. You and I have done a little bit of conversation about politics yeah. in the past. I try to stay away from it as much as possible. But, you know, let's face it. The presidential election matters to the economy. It matters yeah. to the way the stock market treat, is treated, is, yeah. is, is working. And uh, we had a pretty important speech last night by our current president. I was curious to get your take on what the president, on what happened last night. Well, look, I think one thing Biden did do is he did, um, particularly for his followers, he did comfort them that he is compass mentis, that he's alive, which is a big deal, um, and that he uh, has a spark in him. That wasn't enough for me. Um, I, I needed to see that he was a man who, for the next four and three quarter years, for five and pretty much five years, is going to maintain his uh, ability to run the country. Now, I don't think his uh, health, his age and health warrants that kind of comfort. And nothing he did or said last night really gave me that comfort. You know, I, I'm a centrist. Um, I'm very strong on some issues and less strong on others. Um, but as a centrist, I was very unhappy with his speech. I think he he leant very heavily left. The party has moved very significantly left. You know, I've often said on this program, I came to the United States because I was so inspired by John F. Kennedy. Um the, the party in power right now bears no resemblance to the policies of John Fitzgerald Kennedy of the 1960s. And so it shouldn't. You know, times have changed. But um, where it is in, its, in, in the philosophy of government is far, far, far beyond where I am comforted. So... Being as I'm not a Trump supporter and being as I don't consider Trump to be um, qualified to be a president of the United States by behavior, because I think comport the way a, the way a president comports him or herself is a very important component of the presidency. You know, I only have to point to John F. Kennedy. I mean, he had a crazy wild private life, but he kept it very private. Um, and, and Trump has a very crazy public life, and he keeps it extremely public. Leaves me very uncomfortable. And the other thing is, he's also old. You know, he also has significant speech limitations or vocabulary limitations, and he also gets things mixed up in his, I mean, he's no, he's younger than Biden, and he seems to be more physically capable than Biden, but it's, you know, this is no country for old men. There should be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there should be a movie. I was so, most I was a very concerned, Larry. I mentioned it this morning on my show um, that uh, I didn't hear anything about fiscal responsibility. All I heard no, was spend, it was spend, terrible. Spend, 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 just, spend, spend, spend. <laughs> it was a stump speech, right? Hey, yeah. I'll give you this, and I'll give you this, and I'll take this away from the rich, and I'll give you that, and I'll give you this, and let's have this. I mean, it was a stump speech, not a state of the nation stump speech. Terrible, terrible. Yeah. Well, but you know he's he's a consummate politician. He's a yeah, consummate. Yeah, obviously, politician. obviously, he's proven that. <laughs> you know, the last election, he just he knew he just had to sit down quietly and let Trump, you know, destroy himself. Right. And frankly, that's what he's going to do this time. Probably now, whether it'll work this time or not, I don't know because we've had four years of Biden, and he has completely, completely. Uh, destroyed himself with this immigration um, policy. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, there is a significant portion of the Democratic Party that believes we should have open borders. Right. And there is the vast majority, I, I would say 70% of the population, that understand that that's not a way to run a, a, a nation. Right. And, and are very clear on it. And it is a very damaging case. And we will end up having a president that a very significant portion of the population is really unhappy with. Yeah. Anyway. Well, let's uh, turn our attention to the jobs report. I'm sure we'll talk more about that tomorrow when we when we go over the Kathy Woods report. But we had another complete falsehood today on the job numbers. I mean, every <laughs> month, every time they announce that they say, well, never mind, last month we got it wrong. But this month, this is what it is. I mean, guys, this is this is crazy. The real number today should have been 97,000 jobs. If you subtract the last two changes from the number they gave us today, we were up 97,000 jobs this month. But let's talk about the last six months. Yes. Oh, nine months, 12 months. Nine, yeah. Always, it's always over. I mean, I don't know what is going on. I don't know whether we, I mean, in theory, we haven't changed anything. We're not supposed to change anything without telling people. <laughs> But my, my word, the level of adjustment means that the report that we get for this month is completely, completely bogus. Right. Must be regarded. Sorry, not not is. Must be regarded as completely bogus. Right. Right. Moreover, nobody points out, a few people, but hardly anybody talks about the fact that it's still all part-time jobs. The full-time jobs are not in the numbers they are the, the if you subtract out the total number of jobs over the last yeah. year it's all part-time not full-time jobs and maybe that's the reason why they keep on getting the estimates wrong mm. awesome. you know, that could be the underlying problem which indicates you know just how serious the problem really is and you know this part-time job analysis, I, it, it makes me so uncomfortable. I think part-time jobs indicate unemployment. Uh, well, it par probably partially uh, indicates people that are not able to pay for their food. There's more and more conversation right now about, especially younger families that are really having to uh, put their food their food bill on the credit card because they can't. I guess that's because they're putting less chips in the packet. <laughs> that's probably it. <laughs> Well, we are now state at, of the nation. Stop putting less chips in the packet. <laughs> We're now at three point nine percent job uh, 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 unemployment. Four percent is considered to be kind of the breaking. I mean, it's yeah. really not a number that we. Sh it's just a round number. But the reality is, is we're probably going to be at four percent next month. Um, maybe four point one the month after that. Uh, when does the Fed decide they've broken it? <laughs> Why don't we actually do uh, a series going back to the 70s or 60s, actually, on full-time versus part-time jobs and full-time as a percentage of the population? I, I think that that series hasn't been done yet. If we isolate out the full-time, I'll try and do it by tomorrow morning. I probably won't have time, but that's something that I really need to focus on. Because something is wrong in the state of Denmark or something is wrong in the state of the United States, you know, Bureau of, what is, of whatever it is, of labor. It, this is nonsense. This is nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Well, they dream up a number, they give us a number, then they change it next month. And it's half of it, not half of it, it's a very large proportion. I think one 70%. Third. One third. What? Two yeah. months in a row. It's been one third and the one third that they changed on December, they had to lower it again this month. So I think you're right. It's probably close to half of December. Yeah. <laughs> Time a... is really not on our side. I mean, the longer we go on with this level of interest rate, the longer we continue this down this path, the more difficult it is to get back. Yeah. Well, 
I'm not normally talking about other stocks, Larry, but this week I just feel like we need to talk about NVIDIA. <laughs> a lot of people have been asking me about NVIDIA. I bet they have been. And I do know, because I know I, I know a little bit about what, what you were doing early this morning. I do know that you might have some, some information you might be able to share. Um, NVIDIA is down 10% today. I have now seen articles confirming that Google, Meta, Microsoft, and we know Tesla are all going to build their own chips. We have Kathy Wood saying that the competitors are catching up. <laughs> but do you think that kind of news is what dropped NVIDIA today? Or were they just out past their skis? Or what? <laughs> well, I think that the stock action today was um, the option options closing. Okay. I don't I don't think anything could move the stock 10%. That 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 stock 10% that isn't technical in nature. I mean, it would have taken some real news hitting headlines in you know double size print to have moved that stock down 10%, uh sort of bringing buyers out of the out of the or changing sentiment on the right. stock. So I don't think sentiment changed today. Um, because Microsoft are going to build. A, and, you know, the truth is these companies have been building uh, processes for some time. And, it, I mean, Apple did, um, you know, the uh, uh, Micron have come out with their, you know, H100 buster. So, and and Tesla are manufacturing their own. Uh, and, and Google have have tensor chips have had tensor chips for a decade so um i don't think that there is any piece of news that moved the stock i think uh, the close the, the option action on that stock has been off the charts right right and at some point in time you know people have to balance the books and it's always on a friday at 3:49 or 3:59 <laughs> um so i think that's what happened um yeah, it got over its skis and the option closing and the action of option closing indicates that it got over its skis. Now, is that the end of the run for NVIDIA? I don't think so. Okay. I think that it's going to go back a little and then go up a little. The long term for NVIDIA, if we look at the dominance that Intel exhibited for almost two decades um, from the 80s to the 2000s indicates to, uh, indicates to me that there will be a period of dominance. All of these companies will make their chips and then learn just how difficult it is to make chips and how difficult it is to get production capacity for those chips and how difficult it is to build the software ecosystem that NVIDIA has built. Now, I don't think NVIDIA's software ecosystem is that great, to be brutally frank. I, I think it is not unlike Microsoft's software ecosystem for the x86 family. It was put together over time without, you know, the kind of forethought that could have been given to it. Um, and it was done on a pragmatic basis as some of these things as these things always are um so i think that it is it constitutes a pretty pretty messy melange mm -hmm. and i'm not talking from first hand you know normally i would talk in so on software on first hand experience talking on what i've read and what i've garnered from friends who have first hand experience right so I think um, NVIDIA's place is secure for a decade mm -hmm. because that's how long it takes to build an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do think, however, that the war over the large language models is kind of not the headline we should be looking at and the war over the process is not the headline we should be looking at. I think we should be looking at what are the applications? What are the 
functional capabilities that are being built upon these large language models and upon these processes. You mean like full self-driving and robots? Exactly. <laughs> you, you're exactly right. And and you know, in my in my domain, things that I really understand, not the things that I make as if I understand, make out make out as if I understand, but things that I really understand in the financial services sector, we're beginning to see emergence of real functionality of functional applications that actually implement um, these large language models in a value added way. I think what I'm seeing from those is that the actual capabilities of the hardware and the large language models is kind of interchangeable. It's not that important. The biggest pro, the biggest challenge is, is the training capacity, the training data and the training capacity. I'm not talking about for the, for the foundational models. Right. I'm talking about for the proprietary models. Yeah. So you know, if you want to sell to the bank software, you have to get that bank's data. And you have to make sense of it. And, and it's not difficult to get because it doesn't matter if it's now in text, right. in, in documents. That's the real value of the large language models. Whether the large language model is this high in capability or that high in capability or another inch high in capability on the graph, doesn't much matter. Uh -huh. What does matter is that when you get that information for bank one or insurance company one or financial enterprise number one, that's only part that's only part of the way there. What matters is when you start getting it from financial uh, uh, firm number two and number three and number four, and you combine them, now you're cooking on gas. So it's it's nothing to do with the technology. It's almost the technologies, all this money they're putting in, all this work they're putting in, all this discovery they're doing. It's almost a given now, but if you think about the capability of these large language models of building, you know, really powerful, really powerful capabilities, that's where the value add is going to be. And it's frightening, but at the same time, you know, exciting. Yes, of course. Absolutely. Well, speaking of frightening and, and possibly exciting, um, Rivian um, is Rivian is uh, making a move. I think I think we could say that Rivian is making a move. They've talked about two, three new cars coming out in 2026. They're giving us a lot of uh, a lot of time to think about their new cars that are coming out two years from now, maybe two years from now, because you know if that's what they're estimating, it could certainly be longer. They're also cutting back on their CapEx uh, by uh, cutting back on the Georgia, well, cut, putting it on hold. Uh, they're yeah, I predicted, this three, I predicted this almost three months ago. Three months ago. Yeah, that this was. Yeah, when they announced that factory, I said, I didn't think they're going to build it. <laughs> not announced, when they announced the, the groundbreaking, groundbreaking. Said, that factory is not going to build. Yeah, so people are saying that maybe this is a play to get Apple to buy them. Uh, you don't think so? No. Okay. Uh, they, I don't think Apple, I think Apple is done with the car thing. <laughs> Some people are saying that that they're you know going to do a uh, public offering, and so they're kind of uh, getting their their house in order so that they can go out with a. They absolutely have to do a public offering. They have no choice. Okay. So so this is not big news. I mean, you only have to look at the balance sheet to say they need money. Now, does the money come from Apple, as some people construe, because there's some, you know, there's some coffee grinds in the bottom of the cup that say, or is Amazon going to buy them? Amazon have got a strong, you know, very clear interest, um, and and you know could, or are they just going to go to the market and raise money, you know, and convince the market that this time they look after the capital more carefully? I don't know. I don't think they've done a good job of of managing their money. Uh, I think oh, that's where really. Elon really demonstrated his skill. 
um, he, you know, they they were incredibly, incredibly careful with their money, and um, Rivian, I think, mishandled their money, and had it, you know, that they, they they rode the market at the perfect time, and you know, I I think Rivian have proven that they can build a good car, although. To be honest, you know, I've seen Rivians on my road trips, on my many road trips. Now I've stopped when Rivian's charging in the charge thing next to it. And the build quality is really not great. I mean, really not great. No, seriously. Um, you know, people really criticize the early build quality and still do of, of Tesla. But I mean, I looked at so I mean, I looked at a at a particular point where at a particular corner and you know not only were the anyway, look the build quality was not great and, and, i'm just I'm wondering not, some people are saying and i think i agree with this too little too late that by the time that they come out with this stuff in 2026 i don't think the, it's too little too late it, i'm very pleased they came out with two models and not one because i think that if Tesla can be criticized. It's not being sufficiently aggressive in rolling out their models earlier. We see that right now. This is exactly the reason for the so-called wave. Mm -hmm. There shouldn't have been a wave. There should have been a new car building, you know, two and a half years ago. So this is Rivian avoiding that problem. If anything, they're late. Um, but 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 they're more active than Tesla because Tesla never produced two vehicles in one at one time. But Larry, what I'm trying to say is why well, too little. I don't know what their unique selling proposition is going to be up against Mercedes and they and don't need a unique Hyundai, selling. Hyundai. They don't need a unique selling okay. because Mercedes and 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 Volkswagen don't know how to manufacture EVs. Well, let's, tell you, let's call Hyundai Kia then. That's different. But let me tell you what Rivian is. Rivian is a clear brand. They've identified themselves, this adventure. They have a position in the market. They have one position is A, not Tesla. They're mm -hmm. not Tesla. Right. That's a big advantage because there is a certain sector of the market that it doesn't have to be very big, but there's a certain sector of the market who are now opposed to buying Tesla. Rivian fills that, that gap. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they have this whole adventure thing and they've, you know, they've delivered to that and, and people like that. And, and the third is they're credible. They're a credible US made EV mm -hmm. in the truck and the adventure you know, realm. And there's a market for that. There's a very significant market. They're making a truck that looks like a truck. And they're guys, you've said it before, who in the Midwest will buy mm -hmm. something that looks like a truck. Mm -hmm. You know, I, people don't give Rivian enough credit for having positioned themselves into this adventure space. Would I invest in Rivian right now? I mean, no. I mean, <laughs> you know, Gary's explanation of just how good Rivian is that they came out with this great uh, quarter and they came out with this great announcement. I mean, he's stretching things, particularly when you look at his criticisms of, of Tesla. <laughs> but at the same time, I think Rivian, you know, I think that they can, there is a path. They have to re they have to reform their bad ways, which is you know not a focus on cost, not a focus on production um, uh, capability. Failing, failing to focus on those. Yeah. Failing to yeah, sorry, failing yeah. to focus on, and that you know that could be disaster. That could be fatal to them. Uh, Tesla. Elon has often spoken about it. He said, you know, this is critical. We can't spend that kind of money, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and they're doing exactly the opposite. They're spending the money. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, unfortunately, they got, to, fortunately for them, they got to the market at a very frothy time. Unfortunately right. for them, they didn't take advantage of that by taking that money and really making it count. Right. right. And and getting onto the, getting, as, 
as Elon said, getting onto the production floor and just sweating it out until you actually make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Larry, I know we're up against a, a hard yeah. break here. Um, the only thing left is the is to look over the, the the financial numbers, but I could let you go if you need to go, or we could talk about those real quick. Let's talk about it. We've got a few minutes. Okay, all right. It. Let's uh, take a look at, by the way, everybody, Larry is going off to celebrate his birthday tonight. So happy birthday to you. People were challenging me to sing happy birthday a cappella to you, Larry. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand you're a great singer. So uh, I have you know. I have a little background in that department. I, great would be a real stretch. All right, let's okay. <laughs> let's take a look. I'll, so I'll, I'll let you off the hook. You let me off the hook. So Tesla ended up down $3.31 today. The Dow ended up uh, down 68. The NASDAQ down 188 today. But of course... You got a lot of that was Rivian. I'm, I'm not Rivian. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, NVIDIA. S&P down 33. And the Magnificent Seven were mostly down. Shockingly, this is interesting. The two that have been down, Apple and Google, were the ones that were up. <laughs> and the rest of them were down. So it looks like kind of one of those days where you had profit taking and reinvestment in, uh, in the laggards, except for Tesla. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting day. How did oil finish the week? So oil finished down today. Uh, let's take a look here. We've got oil down at uh, seventy-seven eighty-five. I mean, it's been Larry. It's been in a dollar and a half trading range all week, and maybe even yeah. longer than that. Seventy-seven, seventy-eight, seventy-nine. Very, very tight on the Texas Intermediate. Brent is still uh, about the same distance uh, apart right now. Natural gas down almost a full percent today. Wow! So that's a dollar at a dollar eighty. Your best friend uh, eighty for natural gas. Good grief! <laughs> I mean, I keep on thinking. I mean, I say this every week, but my word. <laughs> Copper down almost a full percent, uh, sitting at three eighty nine. Uh, it's been kind of bumping up against that four dollars, but it doesn't seem like it. Well, at least for now, it doesn't look like it's going to go over. Gold all time highs again, twenty one eighty four. Gold hitting all time highs, hey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> then we have crypto. I'm sorry, Bitcoin specifically. I don't follow. I don't follow any of them, but I'm only going to talk about Bitcoin. Sixty eight eight fifty one, and it was higher than that. So it is also uh, at all time highs, unless you've taken, we, that's right, you told me the other day, we should not take into consideration the uh, inflation. <laughs> no, you can't because of that's the history. Yeah. Right, all right. Then we got the uh, 10 year in the, uh, well, it, it, sh it shouldn't be moving right now. Why is it moving? We're, we're closed. Why is it still changing? Well, okay. So for the day, it ended up uh, down, the 10-year ended up down 1.3. But interestingly, the two-year ended up down 3.4. So wow. a slight closing of the inversion. Mm -hmm. um, so that puts the 10-year at 4.08. Mayor Thaker says that the re recession comes when the, when the close happens, not when it actually opens. Yeah, so a couple of things. So the close happens, people say when the close happens, and people say that when the unemployment numbers are at their highest, I mean, the, un, the employment numbers are at their highest, that's when you, you look for the, yeah. for the change. And that by the time that the unemployment numbers come down, it's too late, you're already in it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said that backwards. By the time the unemployment numbers go, start going over 4%, like they might next month or the following month, it's too late. Well, they may be already. They might already be in a recession. Right. Exactly. We don't. Yeah, they may already be. Yeah. Right. And interesting, here's the weirdest part of all. This is really a wild one. The two-month, which some people also look at the inversion on the two-month, the two-month has been up the last two days in a row, big time. It is now almost 100, well, about 140 basis points from the 10 year. And that is a, that's about as big as it ever gets. At, at one point, it was 150. But over the last couple of years, 150 has been the maximum. Right now, it's starting to bump up against that maximum. <laughs> I guess. I, I, people find it very difficult to understand what the Federal Reserve's, what they think may be. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. 
that is the list. Great we, week. We've covered it all. Yeah. And, uh, you have a great birthday for Thank a week. You. For a week, you will be a lot older than me. <laughs> and then I'll catch up at least a little bit. <laughs> what is the actual date? Mine is a week from tomorrow, the 16th. Yeah. 16th. I thought, it was, yeah, 16th. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I put a big mark in the calendar and we'll have a party. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I will not sing. You you will be you you, you will be in Texas, so uh, I probably, will I will probably probably for all we know that's the date that they'll fly. That, that's it. I'm looking forward to you know having that be part of my birthday celebration. All right, Larry, have a great evening, and to all of you out there, it has been great talking to you.